Hello, everyone. I'm your speaker, Brian Ignacio. Uh, today, we're going to cover a few of the new things we got for you so you can take a look. Uh, the outline is we're going to do an introduction. We're going to talk about the Eclipse CDT GDB debug adapter, the ESP IDF unit testing on BS, and other features worth mentioning uh, about me um, i am part of the ide team i work in esp idf bs code extension esp idf web extension uh esp 2 gs for flashing a monitor from the browser and the web ide using eclipse thea uh, i like cooking i like coffee and talking about technology and AI in general. Uh, this introduction about the new features. The, the ESP IDF BS Code la latest improvements. We have uh, many features. Uh, some key features are the Eclipse CDT GDB debug adapter, the ESP IDF unit testing from BS Code unit testing UI, the ESP IDF version switcher, uh, code navigation without fully building and other features you can take a look our bs code uh, esp idf extension for bs code in github repository you can check the change log for any other additional features first let's talk about the eclipse cdt gdb debug adapter it's a new debug adapter to improve the debugging experience but what is a debug adapter bs code implements a uh, generic, it means language agnostic, debugger UI that is based on an abstract protocol. It's a protocol that was implemented to communicate with different debug backends. So a debugger typically use their own long established protocol. So we will need an adapter to communicate between a debugger UI and the traditional debugger. This adapter is an standalone pro process with uh, its own protocol. It, it is defined in the Microsoft Debug Adapter Protocol. You can see the URL in the slides. Uh, both the debug adapter and the abstract protocol is implemented by independent contributors. So many people can write their own debug adapter to implement different debuggers for the VS Code. In search for a better solution of our own for ESP IDF projects, we choose the Eclipse CDT GDB adapter made by the Eclipse CDT GDB Cloud, Eclipse CDT Cloud team, uh, and we made some changes. Uh, but the Eclipse CDT Cloud team uh, adapter, uh, it was written in TypeScript and is using a serial port npm package uh, and this allows us to provide some faster communication than our previous debug adapter implemented in python another feature we implemented is the esp idf unit testing uh, in the bs code ui by leveraging pytest embedded in unity in bs code so first little bit about ESP32 unit testing. When you are developing an application using ESP IDF and you are considering adding unit testing to your component functions, the extension allows you to discover unit tests already written in your project and be able to execute them on your real hardware target using Unity and the unit testing uh, UI from VS Code. You can take a look at the unit testing in expressive documentation in the link in the slides. So how do we do the auto detection? So this extension basically explores your current project workspace folder. So it follows the convention as described in the previous documentation. We will try to find all test cases files that follow the test underscore name that C glob pattern. And each test is rendered in the UI that is rendered as a test case as described in the presentation. You can see test case, the test name, and the module name. 
So we do a regex matching this uh, pattern. In the background, we run PyTest Embedded. It's a module written in Python that we written to execute Py PyTest for our ESP IDF projects. And it allows you to uh, run tests on the real device. So uh, what we do is create a Unity app in your same project. This Unity app is basically a Unity menu that loads all your tests that we found in your device. So we will build this Unity app, we will flash it, and then we will use PyTest Embedded to run this test. Uh, you can take a look at the PyTest Embedded documentation uh, in the slides. Other features worth mentioning, the ESPIDF version switcher. Whenever you install an ESPIDF version using the ESPIDF configure, ESPIDF extension command, the installations are safe in a global state in the extension in your VS Code uh, configuration. You can now use the ESPIDF select current ESPIDF version to set the ESPIDF version you want for the current project from the list of versions you have installed before. You can see this command also in the status bar render as, as ESPIDF version and the number version. And in the slides, you can see the dropdown with all the IDF versions that you can switch, uh, choose from based on your setup. Now you can uh, enable the code navigation without fully project building. One of the key features of an IDE is code navigation. While working on your project, you usually want to benefit from such common language features such as syntax highlight, code completion, go to definition, declaration, and etc. For C and C++ language support, there are many extensions you can use, such as Microsoft C, C++ extension, or the C Lang D. Most of these extensions rely on a compiles command JSON. This is a JSON compilation database, which is an array of command objects where each command specifies a translation unit used to compile in the project name. This basically means where to find the definition of a function uh, object, etc. Now you can generate such file, a compiles command JSON, for code navigation without fully building your project just by running this command: espidf idf pi reconfigure task, which basically will run the first step of building, which is just uh, reconfigure. Uh, if for any reason you don't want to build fully build the project, but you still want to use code navigation, this command can help you to generate the file for enabling code navigation and syntax highlights and, and such other language features. Now let's take a look at some example code. Uh, so here I have two projects. First, let's execute this uh, project. Uh, this is the test project. Here you see I have a, a, just an example, an example unit test. This is from our VS Code uh, test. Uh, this is from the ESPIDF examples unit test, which has a component that has some unit tests defined. So this component has a, our project has a component called testable that includes a test. Uh, and this test has uh, three test cases. So you can see that in this uh, project we have open. We go to this testing uh, tab, and it will the VS Code will find this uh, test. And if you run this test, there's gonna happen that you're gonna see two things that are gonna be executed. First, the PyTest will be installed if it's not installed in your in your Python uh, packages in your virtual environment. Or you can use this command, install ESPIDF PyTest requirements, and it will uh, build and flash the unit test app for testing, as we discussed before. So uh, here now, 
what you need to do after this happens, you just need to press play here. This will execute the, the test. You see that a uh, PyTest is getting executed. Uh, I we skip the building and flashing to save some time, but basically it will build and flash the, the Unity app application before, if it's not, uh, if it's not in, uh, flash already. And you see that the test get executed. Uh, and you can see some version for each of the tests uh, here. And the terminal shows you the execution for each of the, the tests. As you see, each test can be run individually, or you can run the whole per file test. Uh, this is for the unit test cases. This test can be auto detected. You can clear the resort, the results. And yeah, that's that's pretty much it for the unit testing. You can see here the the button for the select current IDF version. If I click here. You can see that the, the list of IDF version, and if I, I select one or another, this will update here, and it will update the, the version on your system. Okay, now let's take a look at some example code. So here I have just the Blink example, uh, and this Blink example is gonna use the new launch JSON configuration. So now we have this new configuration called GDB target. This is the one we implement uh, for, for this new debug adapter. And now, basically, you want to build and you want to flash the project. I already built, but let's let me flash the, this project. Okay, now that I flash the project, I'm going to close here and then I'll, I'll start a debug session. So starting a debug session can be very simple. You just need to press F, F5. Uh, you can see that the output will show you some output from OpenOCD. And in the debug console, you can see the debug console with the several things. Uh, you can see the threads getting generated and all the communication between GDB and the VS Code. If you want to run some, some commands, you can do some like this, I threads, for example. And this will run some GDB commands. You just need to put this uh, sign first. This is for the console. Now you can do some uh, simple operations like uh, a step, uh, like continue. You can run these uh, commands, a step over, a step into, etc. cetera. Um, you, can, uh, you can see some of the things here. The, Uh, you can see the step into, but we did the step into in the uh, wrong location. <laughs> Sorry for that. Uh, but here you can see some uh, the the lines being executed and things being uh, go forward. So now let me talk a little bit about the UI. Here, for example, I have just an array. Uh, and you can see this in memory. If you click this sign, for example, you can see the binary data. And the binary data, you can see the decoded text is the same matching as I have here. Hello, world brain. Hello, world brain. Um, you can also see the registers here. You can watch a specific uh, variables. Uh, there is also this uh, implementation of peripheral viewer where you can see the values of uh, a specific uh, uh, output for the GPIOs. So for an example, when you link the LED or something, you can see that there's some uh, some things get updated. To enable this ESP IDF peripheral viewer, you need to add uh, ESP, the SBD file that you can find in our expressive uh, GitHub uh, repository. And then you just need to save a setting here, uh, SBD file path, and then you pass the SBD file when if you define that you can see the in the in the debug you can see here uh, you can see the peripheral viewer uh, you can also see the call stack uh, and you can switch between uh, task you can switch different tasks and you can switch between different things um, here uh, you can see some some error something like this um, 
and yeah, and this is the basic uh, this is basic uh, debugging. But now also you can see here that I have an error that it will panic. So this is the reason why we don't allow the thing to fully continue. So now if you want to capture these specific things, uh, you can do something like um, you can run um, the a monitor with for core dump and GDB stop. So if you start this, you will start a debug session when it's when there is an exception occur. So you see that the monitor is started, and the when the exception was uh, rendered in the monitor, you see that there is an output that uh, the there is an error core and guru meditation error in the in the IDF monitor, but this will trigger uh, a socket event, and with this command the the launch IDF monitor for core dump EDB stop mode, it will listen to this event and it will trigger a debug session. And you can see that this will capture here uh, the exception that has occurred. And then you can execute tasks that you will do in core dump and core dump and GDB stop modes. Uh, please take a look about IDF documentation regarding this uh, debugging modes. Yep. And that's all from, from my side. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you like these features. And if you have any questions or doubts, please contact us uh, through GitHub uh, repository or our official uh, communication uh, media. Thank you very much. Hi, guys. Uh, today, I will uh, show you the new feature, which is called Hints Viewer from, for the VS Code extension. A little bit about myself. I work as a, as a developer for the project of uh, ESP IDEA VS Code extension. In the free time, I like to watch and practice Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And also, I like to tinker a bit with programming on different domains, such as game development or web development. So let's jump straight into it. I'm going to present you, as I said, the Hints Viewer. This is the first version. Um, currently, there are two main functionalities of the of the Phoenix Viewer. One is hovering over an error. And also, there is a button panel which display the errors and the hints. And uh, it gets automatically updated based on the text editor's errors. It can also be used to search for specific hints uh, manually. So let me jump straight into the into VS Code. And here I have opened a Blink example. And uh, what, I, what I will do now is that introduce this uh, include uh, with this library, which is deprecated because it, it, it has been changed. So now, if if I would have to save this file and build the project, I will receive an er error indicating exactly this this error. So now, if I hover over the error, I can see here that I get a hint uh, telling me what what I should do. Um, this hint uh, comes from the hints.yaml file inside the ESP IDF. Uh, so yeah, we are trying to keep some of the errors um, that we know uh, they appear, that might appear, and provide some hints for them. Um, so yeah, this is the first functionality. The second one is that is this uh, bottom panel here which you can see uh, it gets uh, updated with the error from the text editor. Also, from inside here, you can search by um, you can search error by yourself using a string. 
So in this example, let's uh, search for uh, CMake errors. And right now, yeah, as I said, it looks inside the hints YAML file and uh, all the errors that have CMake error inside them are getting displayed here. So let's uh, fix uh, the error as it was uh, described when I built it. So I will just uh, update this library here. And as you can see, now the, the project doesn't have uh, any other errors. So as I said, this is the first version of the Hints Viewer. We are planning to improve it. And um, one of the improvements would be to uh, target only the errors that are coming from our extensions. So this will help with um, searching, uh, searching algorithm. So yeah, this is it. I hope uh, you will use this feature and provide us feedback on ways on how we can take this a step further. Yeah. So that will be it from me. Thank you guys for, for watching.